Hola. Por favor, los que tengáis algún sitio al lado, levantad la mano. Para... So, if you've got some free room next door, please raise your hands for the new people that are coming to the room. And so that the people near the stairs can, can find a free spot. Thank you. Venga, pues vamos a empezar. Tenemos... Okay, so let's begin. Here are our two speakers. They're both called Ruben, and they're going to talk about the Lord of the ATMs. Good morning, everyone. Okay, no one thought we were actually going to bring a real ATM here. Not even the people from the bank where we stole it. Okay. So let's begin. ATMs is a very recurrent theme lately. And this is what our customers are showing. So who are we? You may know me. I'm the president of Naveja Negra, Ruben Rodenas. I work at CyberSoc, which is part of Deloitte. And we are both passionate about computing and security. I do not, I'm not the chair of, of that company. I'm just in the background. I'm the colleague of Ruben, and we keep talking to each other on Telegram, LinkedIn and we work very hard together. And this is our girlfriend, Winko Nixov, our ATM. At CyberSoc, we managed to do social engineering so that they can, the bosses can buy two ATMs. But here we have one of them, the NCR. So we wanted to focus this presentation for the people who are going to start targeting cash machines or ATMs to mention the problems we've encountered. It may seem a bit dense, we may go very quickly on certain points, but we're going to give you the presentations you can check in your own time. And here we're going to go a bit quicker. So we do one of audits in ATMs, and in a normal company, when a bank requests a company such as Deloitte or any other security company to audit the ATMs. In most cases, the following happens. There's an auditor that faces the ATM, like a black box, that audits the environment, whether there is access to the OS. It's like an internal audit in most cases, absolutely. So there's a lack of a specific knowledge about the ATM, and if you have the time, you can look at the evidence or capture cards. But according to lack of time, documentation material, we need to use the existing malware, reverse it, and that's how we attack the ATM. And then we realized this, that was not the best way of doing it. So we thought of setting up a lab. And this was quite recurrent. Once you do the audit, maybe the audit that found that gets another project, and the new auditor finds the same thing. So you don't have the time, you cannot go deep in the ATM's protocol. This happens one, once and again, on and on. That's if the auditor doesn't go to another company, because you know what this is like. Okay, so regarding our approach, we're going to tell you about how we're going to focus this presentation. As Ben Rodin also mentioning, since the malware works well, let's see what it does, which commands it uses and what it uses to do it. The XFS is the standard that most of them use. Later on, we'll mention this in more detail, but the XFS standard is agreed by all manufacturers to be independent. And then we have the protocol of each manufacturer. And that's a specific attack to each driver and manufacturer. So we said, OK, let's get hands on to it. Let's talk to our bosses, okay. If we have a problem, let's do a, a simple plan. 
let's unload the SDK and buy an ATM to do it. As simple as that. That's how we set up that. And we felt like this girl. I'm the parakeet. Me. Okay. Yo. <laughs> Imagine the face of the boss when we got there and said, hey, I need 6,000 euros. Well, after that, everything was quite difficult. That's why we need to thank the Lord, because they supported us from the beginning in this project. That was very important, and that will really help in the future. So thank you, the Lord, for supporting us. They never said no. But here's the story. They didn't object. To anything, but feel free to start if you want. Buying an ATM is not it's not easy. You don't go to the shop around the corner to do it. We did go to a Chinese homeless store and try to buy one there in a Chinese bazaar, but we didn't manage to. Well, if you want ATMs, do not order them from China. We do not we did not reflect this on paper because we thought it was important to mention this in person because it's a very tricky issue. No one will accept PayPal. No insurer will insure, will insure the transfer. Everyone wants you to pay it with Western Union, so it's a bit complex. So by researching a little bit, we realized that the Chinese guy was going to send us a ton of shit. So we said, OK no Chinese supplier, and we went for a Turkish supplier. We took the risk, much better. And we thought we were going to get a tongue of kebab. Well, people tend to like Turkey more than China, but anyway, when we talked to the Chinese guy, it was very difficult to find the ATM. We went on eBay. I looked for it on Amazon. It was crazy. And a Chinese guy was saying, well, I'll give you the ATM, but opening the safe is tricky. I'll give it to you, it's closed. And I'm like, OK, but for when? I'll open it sometime, but when I can get it? Does your mother manufacture ATMs or what? Well, we're going to make it anyhow. So we didn't have all the time we wanted to do the PowerPoint presentation, but I think we'll reflect our work and our aims. But let's do it quite quickly. So the Turkish guy did agree to sell the ATM. We trusted him, and he was vehicle to find the contact details. And the Turkish guy was like, hey, are you Chinese? We actually called him and said, hey, we need an ATM. Are you Chinese? No, I'm not. Are you? No, I'm not Chinese either. So who's Chinese here? Anyway, we changed our telegram. And um, we communicated better. So we talked to the Turkish guy. He didn't want to ensure the transaction anyhow. So we need to tell the boss, hey, we're, we're here to play. Let's take the risk. And he said, what do you mean? We need to pay 4,000 euros without any, any guarantee? Yes, if you want the ATM, give us 4,000 euros. So we got a serial seal number with some letters until we got the ATM. So the Turkish guy restores ATMs. He's one of them. So how much does it cost? 3,000 euros. OK, send us one. He's like, OK, I'm going to paint it, galvanize it, and send it. Yeah, that's what I do for a living. And if you don't paint it and galvanize it, it's 1,500. OK, then I'll have two, the Winker and the NCR. Since I'm paying 3,000 euros, let's get two of them instead of one. So from then on, we got lots of problems. Then at customs, they're like, oh, wow, you bought 3,000 euros in ATMs. So 800 euros for, trans for the transport plus custom duty, another 800 euros. And our boss was delighted. 800, of course. It had no driver, nothing. It was purely clean. So we had to work on the hard drive, and we found everything there. Mal malware, you know, boobs. That's not a joke. At 4 a.m., you know, you might be happy to see that. S 
also accounting books, PSTs, PST gig- gigas. They delete their hard drives as they can, even drivers. Well, eventually managed to recover quite a few things and get it to work. One of the people with whom we got in touch to get a, some software that came with all the NCR drivers so that they could help us, so that they didn't trust us because we were auditors. He was like, I mean, you may read it here. Well, I'm a manufacturer, you know, we have that phase. I'm a manufacturer, I talk to NCR and to security investigation teams, and we reached the conclusion that the reason why there is so much malware and banks are attacked so much is that it's very easy to have an ATM in a lab or a garage. That's why there is increasingly more mal- malware. It's like, yeah, right, we're going to do secure policy, we're going to do isolation, but that's the reason. OK, let's go to the crux of the matter. ATM audit- auditing. Let's get the wood out and make some smoke. So on this slide, we see the procedures for an ATM audit like any other device on it, eventually. So you need to review the communication mechanisms and the security of critical resources, the configuration of third-party developers and development. Just everything that is done in technology you start researching. Do you have any comments? Well, you need to audit the environment, Audit the server and check whether there's any domain controller. And check if the ATM is in a corporate network. They're not going to buy the ATM. Anyway, let's go further ahead and then the third party developers. Because in the industry you have the ATM manufacturer and you have the hardware and the software. Then you have the OS. Usually they have Windows. XP or Windows 7 and then the bank they get like this with the CE and then they need to install their own applications since they usually have their cash dispensing screens they need to have their own application so there are many vectors for potential vulnerabilities that's right okay regarding the manufacturers let's go through them very quickly we we want this song to be for auditors or they have some basic knowledge about what to do so it's like Wikipedia NCR are the people in charge of these ATMs and there are some of the first ones this had Windows NT and Windows 98 good idea and they introduce the anti-vandalism measure some of the first ones and NCR in like a in the 1800s they already had saves but here this had a chip. You need you didn't need to blow it up to open it up. And they keep evolving. Please do not apply what you learn here with ex- with other ATMs, but these ones are nicer, more beautiful, more customer oriented, with a better user experience. And then CR also manufactures the points of sale that you may find in Carrefour, for example, which are not that different from uh, an ATM. So this dispenser has the same, a different shape, but you use the same protocol. You put in the coins, you get out the notes, and usually people fa- forget the notes sometimes, so please do not forget them. We is a different ATM manufacturer. They manufacture the, their ATMs in a different way. They are all manufacturers of hardware and software and Diebold bought Nixov and there was a war with NCR and they got position so there, there are more brands the one on the left is the safer one which is now Tilo's Hyosun it's Chinese and let's talk about the software we can find in each device we have Agilis, the protocol 90, uh, 91X, 910, 911, 912, and the middle where, where is Libol, Agilis, and Power. 
There's a differentiation here, but each manufacturer has different communication protocols, and one of them is standardized and may be reduced with other manufacturers, but they created a standard communication protocol for the hardware. NCR also has their own hardware and middleware. Yes, there is an evolution here with different hardware, and then there is a middleware. And then we have Rincon Mixov, same thing. And Fujitsu, which is the exception. They're not a manufacturer, they buy hardware. They also manufacture software, but they're mainly a hardware operator. And their middleware is more defined for customers who develop things on it. Well, Fujitsu assembles, they use a middleware that is quite comprehensive, apparently and they allow you to have NCR and Winco dispenser inside. So when we audit the ATMs, we see a wide range of manufacturers. Sometimes things are also assembled in China. And here's the difference. We have it through the wall, which is castered in the wall. And then the lobby, which is sometimes connected to the network with Wi-Fi 3G within risks that that entails. So what do we find in the audits? We find any sort of device where users are administrators or we're just normal users. And the software that these machines contain tends to be antivirus, proprietary protection software to protect the ATM, Yes, yeah, sometimes you have ad hoc software because an antivirus may be used for certain things, but the malware of the ATM is, say, XFS cost client. So if by using a function, this malware, the bank's application is malware. So the customers eventually and the manufacturers implement ad hoc solutions. Here we find management software, and here we're looking at the attack surface. If you have a downward that is updated, because sometimes you have the network with thousands of ATMs and maybe some something needs to be updated. So they have remote management tools. They don't always need a technician to fix things. It depends on the risk and on the kind of update. But it's a very mixed and varied field. When things work well and they're protected well, eventually everything works fine. This will happen in all the audits we did for the ATMs. You know, we got a shit spread all over. So you can talk about the defense, proprietary technology, which, has, which are more advanced than these antivirus, but eventually, in all cases, we managed to bypass it. We don't want anyone to feel attacked or offended. And since we try to be as open and transparent as possible, we audit customers, so we cannot really give too many details. So it's been quite hard to give you a scenario where we don't compromise anything or anyone. In fact, we have videos and pictures of everything that we cannot show. So we try to do everything as legally as possible. The legality of buying a ATM is undefined, because eventually you don't get software to use it. They tell you that they cannot sell it to you because you are an auditor. So we don't know to which extent in Europe or out of Europe this is legal. But eventually it was an ATM. It's just a computer connected to 1,000 things. Okay, let's go for it. Let's make this fun. Hold on. This sophisticated hacking, as you may see. Look at how I put it in. And now we need to go for it. Is it, is it going up? Can you feel it? No. Hold on. It's not going up. It's not lifting. I need a man. 
Oh. We're just IT guys. Bloody hell. Okay. Because it's 1500, the transport is even more expensive. We spent more money transporting it than the actual cost of the ATM. Thank God this is automatic and Rotatecom pays for the transport. Okay, I don't know whether we could get a camera in here. Well, this equipment, this is a Pentium 4, it's not later generation equipment. But let's look at the CD key. This is super safe. It's a clip, by the way. At least on this one, when you have the clip, it opens. But let's mention something very important. This is not safe. This is inside the bank, anyhow. But they're not trying to make it safe. Which is secure it. You have the ticket printing part, the hardware test panel, here you can manage and do all the tests for the ATM even without a computer. You have the menus and you can do different things. And this is what people are interested in. The little boxes. Here's the rejection box. Here's the money. So here are the little boxes. I don't know whether you can see it in the video. And this is the rejection box. When money is coming out, but for some money, for some reason, you don't get it. Or it goes back in. It doesn't go back to the main box. It goes to this recycler box. So that the day after, in the bank, they're like, OK, well, this note is fake or whatever. So this one is not accounted for automatically, but it's done manually. And here, in a very professional way, there is a tag with a note number. OK. We've got a loose piece here. Where does that go? And here we have our mega notes. OK, we need to call the Turkish guy something came off. Let's glue it later. Do you have some chewing gum? Maybe that will work. Okay. Okay, we're doing a presentation. Come on. Let's be serious. Okay, I'll just close it. So here we have the cassettes. I don't know you... I don't know whether you've seen this, but there's a part for ink here, in case there is, for anti-vandalism, the ink will flood this to stain the notes in case of a problem. I don't know whether you can see this, but this is the path of the money. It says, OK, from this cassette, take one note, or 20, and this is the car dispenser. So it goes through this belt and gets to the dispensing side. So let's do a demo here. For the rejection bit. For the note rejection. I think we need to turn it again. No, I'll just... Do it, and you can show the box. OK, the box is empty. It's like magic. OK, let's do it. OK, here we go. Well, when I open it, I'll show it. There's a system to confirm that it's closed. It's got a clip to detect when the door is open. So this is latest detection technology. Okay, we can't see it because we don't have the camera, but a little plate put open up 
and um, reject the note. Sometimes when you talk to customers, they're like, well, I'm glad you you were saying that you can steal money without a card from the ATM, but to get out of 30,000 euros, you know, you better get a chair because it's going to take a while. That was a joke, by the way. Okay, you can look now. It was a plate on the side, the one that fell. Okay, I think we're doing okay time-wise. But you've heard it. We cannot lose a lot more time. Do you have 25 minutes left? Okay, let's speed up. Maybe we can do it later on. So this is the logic structure of an ATM with different ATM applications and where the malware will be to attack the device in different ways. Are they attacking directly XFS API or XFS SPI or attacking the driver directly or attacking the black box? The, the most important cable is the USB for the dispenser. So if someone manages to just lift get the USB out and connect it to a Linux or to the application we have, which is a CD that you can download for free on the internet in the demo version. You can just take it out with the USB and all the these will be loaded with a 500k mini RAM disk. You, are, you start it, you ask it to dispense and will dispense. And it goes box by box, emptying everything out. It does all the tests and empties everything out. So. How is an ITM placed? It may be attacked internally, physically, or there may be malware infecting computers in the ATM network and asking, is there any ATM? And if there is, it tries to become a domain administrator and it goes for the ATM. The ATM will never send a signal saying, hey, we've been infected. It will be the computers inside the network and it would be pre-agreed with the criminal. It's usually on a Sunday at 4 a.m. to get out of the money. And here we're just showing that the ATM needs a connection to the bank's network. Some ATMs only give out credit, but usually they need to validate transfers or whatever operation, not just a dispenser. And through that connection with the bank, with a card or the internal network, they can attack it. And regarding the malware, the malware may be in a company in factum. Maybe someone has bad security and browses in the office. The malware creates an infection and that is spread to the company. And maybe you need a NCR. And whoever buys the botnet may say, okay, I'm interested in that one. And when they buy it, they have access to the ATM. It's not a uh, name attack, it's just coincidental. They can also do it with Wi-Fi or 3G. There are many vulnerabilities in GCM. So what happens if you put Shodan in one of these brands? And how difficult is it to find an ATM on the internet? You know, we kind of feel bad to know that these things are happening. But the next step is this. This is our face. But after all of this, we saw the anonymous FTPs. And so on, said that they were anonymous, that we could get in, and that things were there. And in those FTPs, there's a bit of everything. So here we reflect the malware evolution we found until we got, get to Ripper, which is the most advanced malware. And here there's been an evolution. The malware has become more sophisticated. Plotters began in Mexico, and there has been there have been different versions. And basically, these are customers, these are applications. The malware is not hidden. The latest ones do many things, overwriting files. And there was a diagnosis panel that you gave to eject the money. So these are attacks of people who have physical access to the machine. Uh, there, while you do it, other technicians or whoever. We didn't say it at the beginning, but this is teamwork.
we got the help from the Hakim Pool and other colleagues. I'd like to thank the intelligence side because they gave us a lot of help from the start and we were able to assess it and learn a lot. Thanks to the help of colleagues from other departments. The physical attacks are being modified at the beginning. You, they got with a car, they broke, they loaded the ATM and they, they would open it at home somehow. Now, however, they're opening up possibilities because we have technology at home. There's lock picking plus food printer plus a bit of gravel and rottenness that myself bought at home and that's a result. 3D, okay, let's make it more serious. So if you see at the key at the top that has no security whatsoever, you can just print it. There are models in the internet where you just give the measurement of the key, if you've made a picture, and you can reproduce it with a 3D printer. And this is more of the same. How the malware would attack. Each device will have its driver. Then there is the service provider, the SPI, which is already within the standard of XFS, but it's implemented by each uh, vendor. And we will see this in detail next. And then, and then we have the manager, the XFS manager, which is in the middle, because it allows for distributed uh, management, although most people install it in local host, but it allows you from a workstation to send XFS commands to another one. And then on top of that, we have the API, the XFS API. Each group of applications would use that one. Is there a pointer here? So the financial application from the bank, the remote application, it could be done from elsewhere. And diagnosis application tool, which is not only this panel, but there are there is software, diagnosis software that allows you to, to check everything and it uses uh, XFS um, and then malware. And these are approaches that you're not going to receive if you're not a bank. The, man the malware you do receive. So what does the XFS um, say? We've shown in different clients that there are many specific solutions. There is one specific for ATMs that ciphers the disk, which is a manufacturer recommendation, but they do not do it, and they do it with BIOS, and they modify the BIOS so that it doesn't change, and they apply a driver to do a bit of host IDS, it filters ports, it prevents you from seeing certain files, and then there are applications. There are white lists, so it only allows you to access XFS if it's a, a, a part of the white uh, lists of hyper-secure. So at the end, you, you, it takes you a day, really, to break in. And then what happens? There are more layers with XFS. We've seen how they hook. And when you try to go to the library, it tells you you are not a program. Uh, so if it knows how heavy it is, whatever, the features of that process. And since you do not know, or about the process, then you look for a different solution. So the API to the right, you see all the functions of uh, WES. This is where they hook to see if they do requests or not. And we saw this ad hoc rotation, and we said we could not remove the hook in. We, we could just go to the register and remove it. But, um, but be we're going to go to the SPI rather than the APA. So the client in C that, or in Python that you're going to see now, rather than say in WFS, you go to the register, you look at the service provider of the dispenser, um, and, and you just use the WFP. 
It's defined in the standard and the, in the hooking program it says, where are you? This is an example for you to see. WFS executor is the one that sends the final command of, uh, to, to, to spend some money uh, or whatever other command you're giving uh, for that you we focus on the dispenser because it's the, more, the standard one and then it uses other functions, other libraries uh, this one is like a miscellaneous for access register or even to do an attack uh, vector to the memory log. There is a WFMA. And then there's the tracing, because all requests are traced. And, and all of these ones at the bottom. We could show you this in, in at a different time, if you are interested. Um, and at the bottom, you can see that there are different XF as um, libraries. And this we've already told you about. A dispensal was in the hub and is no longer there. It's an application that uh, it's part of a code that explained how to uh, remove all the content of the little boxes one by one. So this is the GitHub. This was there until three weeks ago. And all of a sudden, they saw it later, and they thought they, it was oh, free code, but it included this uh, manual, which is uh, with has a copyright. And rather than deleting the manual, the attack vector reverse engineering and, uh, and one of our interests of having a physical um, ATM to the all of the time to go uh, to access really to the, the device yeah yes we can at least we have that option there so XFS This is a public standard that has no security whatsoever. This is a standard, you can download it, and you have all the chapters. The documentation is very well done, and it has the library, uh, the, the different libraries, so that you can, if you're a programmer and you do not have the ATM, because it's an SDK, you can program it, and it should work, because the vendor commits to receiving the request in that format and the programmer to do it. And so if you follow that, uh, it should work um, as uh, it always does. So in part one, they give you this um, sort of scheme so as to print. Well, the only comment here is that it allows for different devices to work simultaneously. Sometimes uh, some have uh, mutual collusion, etc. This is what I was explaining about the XF manager. And you can see that from a workstation, you can access another device. Right now, clients have ATMs. Uh, client server, client server, but the standard is there and it will end up being distributed and in those uh, communication protocols, which, and there is a Java XFS, uh, there are RMAs, IIs that are, that are always executed in local host and therefore um, security there. We're talking about object invocation from Java, etc. So it's a vector. And here's when you can take your pillow or the coat you brought and take a nap. At the top, you have the more important part. When you take a client, they, it always works, but you have to know the logical name. And that's in the register. You don't need to 
do a reverse in between there. So you look for it and you introduce it. Here you open the device with the, with the logical name. You do the startup, the register, and all bugs, and, and you do the get info, and and from the you ask for the state of info of uh, CTM, and it's going to tell you how much is in each box. So it's not at all complex, and then it can patch the structure. It analyzes it. It tells you what's there. It introduces loops. And another loop at the end. And with this one, you empty. And for each one of the cassettes, you you can tell him to take one out of each cassette or empty them. So at the halfway down, it says uh, CDM command dispenser. So that's a famous command. And what was the library doing? They went to uh, WFS execute. It went straight to execute and validated everything. So if you rather than exe, you write WFP pet execute with different arguments, but it, this is documented. But rather than using this library, it uses the vendor's uh, library and it goes straight to the lower chamber. And why the difference? Because the API allows bugs. When somebody introduces a card, introduce the card, give him the number, and the application can say, I receive an event, uh, there's a user, and this is the user. Not the event of each step of identification. That's done by the SPI. So we've attacked directly. You're attacking the API because it allows you to do so. But if we cannot do it, and even to prove it, you use the SPI and you go directly to. And when you cannot do that, you can go to the driver. So this is the, this it says publish in GitHub, but it's no longer there. This is the screen look of the example. And this is the day we ate when you launch it in the ATM. And why is it censored? But that's my hand. This is details about malware, which has uh, improved gradually. There's something striking. There were deleting techniques and different persistent, basic persistence techniques, which are essential for malware. But what's crucial is that a, a day and a time was agreed upon to get the money out. Yeah. So they went there 3, 4 a.m., they took the money, and they disappeared. That has been the way the malware has been moving. So here we have different malwares defined so that you can take a look at them when you get the slides. And this is the phishing that used to be done to try to pretend being somebody else to, uh, with banks, so they wanted to go straight to uh, devices within the network and then escalate. And Cobalt, this is a bit of a weird story. Do you want to tell it? No, we don't want to. Cobalt is an Armitage tool used for pen testing. And it's just that this malware, because others are better known, they use Cobalt, which is less detected. And, and it, what's funny, is that they analyze, is that it's called uh, Cobalt. So I modified the tool to do a malware, and it has window escalation techniques. It was very complex. It's one of the more uh, complete that we've seen. And this one is one of the more famous ones. This is a diagnostic tool that uh, were modified. It's difficult to get them, but if you do 
you're doing it, you do a bit of reverse thing. You modify a few things and you have the malware. So what did we do? We're going to make our lives easier and we're going to make a program that allows us to connect and audit, to collect all of this information, which at the beginning we said we're going to do something since we've learned this, and when the next colleague comes, they should not be alone because, because we have to work more as a team. When somebody hires the Deloitte team, then we want to have a pool of knowledge so that the level increases because otherwise it depends on who's coming and, and if it's a newcomer, he won't know so much. And if we end up being uh, murdered in a hotel, at least they can get the pen drive and, and, and use it. He likes horses, that's why we have here. And this is Toda working. This is just the output, and it says it's, this is in beta, and we document here how quick it can be. We're, we'll try to improve the code and everything. This is in Python, and it just by the time to upload the library to a correspondent function. This is not a lot of example, but it's one of the first modules that we did and that we introduced. And it's something similar. You import the library uh, at the top. Uh, that's when you get the immunity. But uh, at the bottom, we can see the an NCR. And here we're doing it with API. But when we use by SPI, you, it changed the WFS by the WFP. We also want to thank uh, Javi, who is not here, our colleague. And this is one of the outputs of one of the, scri of the uh, scripts we have. Did we give the note back? That note is uh, worth more than 20 euros. And we want to thank the whole team. Alex, who is the person in charge, and the first one who said yes to everything, and yes and yes, yes is yes. And Sergio. There are people missing because we didn't have pictures and, and the backdrop. You go to an ATM, I mean, no, it doesn't work, I'm going to get a CD that I had, and just out of curiosity. Questions that are not too difficult for us, please. OK, let's go. We have to take the ATM with us. Questions? I to understand a bit better, and out of curiosity, is there a reason, a technical reason, for the software that you usually use, or that uh, ATMs use Windows, and also about architecture, for them to be in the same area than workstations rather than in servers, according to the diagram you've shown? Well, this is just an example the diagram, but we've said workstation so that you can tell oh, it's not going to be a workstation. Everybody knows that uh, that companies segment and segmentation goes in layer two and everything is very well closed. So even if I put here radio servers, it would have been a workstation. But it's just a scheme. And the fact that it's window, imagine the technician who is an expert in everything. You give him a machine, and that you say that this, and this is the vendor, and you're going to give him a lint. So that's way too much. So does this work with Windows? Yeah. Uh, and then you can go ahead. But also, Microsoft is involved in the development of the XFS. And in fact, the technicians are not given the equipment to go directly into the ATM. They are given a pen drive in which 
that they can introduce and it's a diagnosis program done in Leiden. So they touch and they test that everything is correct. I think Windows is more because of the manufacturer and also because it's a computer, you can uh, introduce it in your network, you want to have control because the Linus is more heterogeneous. They have all the servers and all the equipment and all the host in a window. But it has a lot more support for Windows because from SDK you can download the library and, 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 and they put some pressure on you in that direction. Any other questions? Is that all? OK, thanks very much. Ahora hay descanso, ¿no? Ahora tenéis un pequeño descanso y, por favor, si habéis encontrado las llaves... De... There's a break now. If you have found the keys of a car or any other object, please leave them at the reception area.